All right, today guys, we are gonna be looking at histograms and what they are. This is a quick introduction to histograms. You may think you already know what a histogram is, but you might be confusing them with bar graphs. They're very similar, but at the same time, very different. Uh, histograms are a graphical representation of a frequency table, which we've already been making in class, yeah, using rectangles or bars, but they are not a bar graph. Bar graphs measure data, uh, categorical data, like the types of cars you have, red cars, blue cars, green cars, um, what sizes of shirts do you have in a department store, small, medium, large. Histograms measure frequency, just like our tables do over here. So I have a frequency table here already made up. They're, they represent test scores. Um, you see that we have 10, uh, 10 students who scored between 0 and 19, 12 students that scored between 20 and 39, uh, so on and so forth. A histogram that we have right over here shows us that in a graphical representation, we see that the frequency is marked over here on the left and that the scores are represented down here in their intervals on the bottom. And each of these bars that we see here, like this first bar right here, shows us that we have 10 students who scored between 0 and 19. The next bar shows us that we have 12 students scoring between 20 and 39. So 12 students scoring between 20 and 39. The next bar shows us as 6 students scoring between 40 and 59. 4 students between 60 and 79 and 2 students between 80 and 99. And all that is found right over here in our frequency table. That's all a histogram is. They're pretty easy to make, especially if you have a frequency table. Uh, some of the key features that you need to make sure that all your histograms have are a title, the frequency over here, and then the what the intervals represent. In this case, it's test scores. And all this information can be found right over here from your frequency table if you made your frequency table correct. So let's talk about this. Uh, the, the, the biggest question that we always get with histograms is how many of these bars right here do I need to have? Because obviously, if I just do one, that's probably not going to be enough, right? That just tells me that I have about 30. You can tell right here. Let me draw some lines in here. We have about 30 scores between <laughs> 1 and 100. One interval tells me nothing. Uh, two intervals still doesn't really tell me much. It looks like we have maybe one or two that score between 1 and 50, but then a bunch that score between 51 and 100. Still not a lot of information. Uh, here's a, another histogram, same histogram from our, our data here, and uh, uh, our, our data is coming from a bunch of notebook check scores that we did in class. Uh, this is three intervals. Uh, again, we're getting a little more detail here, but this is really uh, not enough still. It tells me I've got a lot of students basically passing their notebook scores, uh, but I'd like to see that break down a little bit more. Four intervals didn't really change a whole lot, and it just shows me that I really have no scores right here. Five intervals is where things start to get interesting. We can start seeing a shape uh, to our histogram, which is what we're going to get into after this video. Five intervals is really important. This is, should be the bare minimum of the intervals that you show on a histogram. Uh, let's move up to 10. 10 intervals. You can see a lot better shape here. We have a little bump here and then a little bit of a shape here. What I like about 10 intervals is, sorry, what I like about 10 intervals is it, I can kind of see that I have a big gap between these two point, uh, these in these two intervals. I got nobody getting zeros, which is nice but I see a majority of my students are right up here, specifically in this area. And that's really nice to know. And again, if I were just looking at a frequency table, uh, yes, I could see the exact numbers, but here gives me a graphical representation of where my students are leaning. Uh, let's move on forward. This is 20 intervals. There's not really a difference between the 10 intervals and the 20 intervals uh, with shape anyway, except for maybe right here. All we do is we really just made all this data spread out with all these gaps. So 20 intervals might be too many, and I went ahead for some laughs and did 50 intervals, 
there is no shape change except for all these gaps got bigger these gaps got added uh, lots of space here that's just not necessary so 50 uh, 50 intervals is uh, a little bit too many and here's some more laughs there's a hundred intervals for you that's basically no interval just a place for one through 100 and you can tell all it did is just made it difficult and who wants to make this histogram anyway right uh, too many gaps it's, it doesn't tell me anything different than basically the 10 intervals uh, so uh, moral of the story guys is uh, we want five to ten intervals uh, you get to choose but we really would like you guys to use five to ten intervals it it's, makes the data fit together it's actually possible to make the histogram and it also displays the data nice and correct so we would like to see five to ten intervals in your histograms if we ask you to make one uh, recap here uh, what, what are histograms histograms are basically uh, graphical representations of frequency tables so if you don't know how to do a frequency table, you should probably go back to my other videos on how to make one. Another thing, uh, how many intervals should we use? How many, how many bars should we use in our histogram? Well, another easy question. We just went through a bunch of examples. Uh, we want five to ten intervals, but again, it's up to you. Um, I don't want to see one interval or two intervals or three intervals, but five would be the minimum. Uh, ten would be on a max, but again, it depends on what you're trying to represent. And guys, that's it. That's what histograms are. In the next video, we are going to be talking about the shape of histograms. I'll see you there.